Hello everyone and welcome to episode 12 of the TW9, uh, about to say Local to Global, Road to Glory series here on the channel as we are still with Sin City Grappling, of course, in our second year. And uh, yeah, the double show month, not great as far as we lost over $1,000, not great, not great, about 15000 in the hole right now, but... Uh, this month again, another double shot as far as uh, night seventeen or night of sin sixteen and seventeen. As uh, this episode, though, as far as uh, we see that night of sin sixteen is on Valentine's Day, and we will have a Saint Valentine's Day massacre matchup. As uh, we will see Rob Reynolds and the Big Bad Wolf Walter Tag battling it out. And uh, it is a first blood match. It will be a bloody Valentine's Day. As far as for one of those two men. Figured this would be a fun kind of... Again, we told the story a little bit through... Uh, basically, you can say from the first matchup where we saw the fastest KO in the company history. Rob Reynolds you know, took his time off, was you know, recovering from that knockout. Maybe it you know, bruised his ego. Maybe it uh, lit a fire under him. But he has been uh, on a war path to take out the Big Bad Wolf, Walter Tech. Even so, by throwing his previous match against him, by using a closed fist, won't be any rules, not a time limit, anything like that. It is over when the first man bleeds. Uh, so that's going to be a lot of fun to do. That's not going to be the main event, though, because we know... That their matches, because they don't have any chemistry, absolutely stink. So that is the co-main, because the main event is going to be as far as I'm hoping, hoping for a good main event with this, as I will just go ahead and look at the card. It will be as far as Carrie Fry and Rob Edwards, as far as that's going to be the penciled in main event, as uh, I think this is a main We'll have to have this as the co-main, because obviously, you know, St. Valentine's Day Massacre matchup with Rob Runs and Volter Tag. I mean, that's got to be a pretty high match on the card. I do like uh, Blackwell Bush and Michelle Bernard, but also, I like Nigel Sevens and Ray Caballero as well, because both those uh, matchups feature guys with at least winning records and whatnot. And then, the fourth matchup between Kato Mormasa and Marcus Mahan, you know, as far as we saw the trilogy... Last year, I believe the actual trilogy matchup, believe, uh, we'll take a look when we get into the show, but I believe it was February, so I believe this is a year in the making for the uh, from the uh, fourth matchup, because they are 1-1-1 one, one, and one against each other. So they needed that, that fourth matchup in the series, and now they have it. As far as um, what I'm hoping for for this show, again... We are seven spots away, or I guess actually six, from, uh, oh no, we are still at seven. Seven uh, away from being tiny. Of course, when we get to tiny, we get another roll. Really open for a money roll. <laughs> really, really open for one. Just has not happened. But, we're feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good about uh, Night of Sin 16 and 17. Uh, Scary Terry Roundtree, though, will have... Uh, the month off has, after he just obviously defended his belt for the first time successfully, wanted to, uh, again, he's going to be in a unique position where we really want to use him in title matches and keep him as a top star, as the number one guy. So he's not going to be used as much as he probably is used to, at least compared to last year. So I do want to at least... Three, uh, three weeks time off. Yeah, so March 7th he'll be back. Just in case, I th I want to say the, the next show is March 21st, I want to say. It could be 14th, though, so I just want to make sure that he's going to be there for it. But yeah, we are, uh, we should be all set, because there's really nothing more to really change. I did update, again, uh, as far as some of the, uh, as far as the bios and, again, the records here, as uh, Carrie Fry and um, Nigel Sevenson, which we just saw Carrie Fry actually uh, beat uh, Nigel Sevenson. So, again, we got to change that to coming off 
a win. Over. Nigel Sevenson. Perfect. So some of these, I, I will say, um, with like uh, Terry Roundtree, you know, now you know, inaugural BMF champion, we'll probably add how many defenses he has. You know, as far as because right now he's he's obviously six zero and one after beating Walter Tag, so that's going to be nice. And yeah, as far as uh, no new members of the roster yet, um, I'm hoping that that might change a little bit. Uh, maybe either next episode or the episode after that, depending on how the mini um really how the money situation is, because I feel like this is gonna be another thousand dollar um loss uh, for the month, because it's gonna be a double shot again. But we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. Because, again, I, I'm feeling pretty good about where we are size-wise and how we're building. Uh, of course, the shows, though. I mean, my God, we just had the worst show of uh, of the series so far with uh, Night of Sin 14 to kick off the new year because of the fuck finish. Because I carry a Friday Night of Sevenson matchup. That was, that was a great, great matchup. And uh, I'm hoping that we can have some great main events throughout Night of Sin 16 and 17. As uh, they have been, I've been looking at some of the, um, I guess you could call them generated guys, because, you know, I don't think they're technically a part of the Seavers, but they're, you know, as far as the new talent that have debuted within the save, uh, there's an MMA crossover guy uh, it, that's based in America, which is great. Uh, his stats are not great, but for somebody that can get pretty cheap and a you know, guy to build up Potentially not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Um, For the given the uh, night off, usually I like to do this, but just because we don't really need to go through that. For if, if they are not here for one night, it's not that big of a deal. Hopefully at least. Um, My God, 120 people though. We're almost, almost. If we can get to 150 and be at half capacity, man, that'd be great. That would be absolutely great for the Piper Casino. As, uh, of course, booking team meetings. Eh, don't need that. Well, like a rumor incident. As, uh, John Snyder, by for Russ's court, failing to pick up his share of the tab at the bar. As Marcus Mayan found him guilty and sentenced to buy drinks after the show. Small positive impact for him. And uh, Esteban Pena also was accused of failing to pick up his share of a tab. This one, though, is on a shared rental car, as he found them got the incentive to pay the full cost of reimbursement for travel. I don't know if anybody's coming from Mexico, so I'm not sure what exactly is his riding buddy for the shared rental car. And I just have turns up very late, which I could have swore that is not a locker room rule, but negative impact for him, too. And then Goro Hanamoto about fought a fan, which, listen, I kind of like that, though, for this company. We need to have people that are not afraid to fucking throw down. That, that kind of rule. But it's been negative impacts on a lot of these guys. Oh, and now uh, Roberto Ayala uh, create a finish. Well, that's cool. That is cool. Um, Yeah, we'll, in, uh, we'll inspire the, the talent here. Yeah, 60 days. Hopefully that it, it should be fine. So basically we won't be able to use it from March. And, uh, and, and probably some of April as well. Depending on when the show is. As, yeah, it's hard to believe that um, the Mendoza boys, you know, the uh, Pedro and Sergio Mendoza, debuting. I believe they debuted on, on Night of Sin 3, from what I remember. Yeah, and that was also John Snyder's debut, Terry Roundtree's debut. Bit of a change of the guard that night. And uh, for... This, I, I wanted it to be, again, a, a video that would have been uploaded onto the channel uh, before the show gets, you know, aired and, and ran. And it's the Big Bad Wolf, Walter Tag. It is shot backstage area after Night of Sin 14, which saw a bloody, bloody... You know, Big Bad Wolf, Walter Tag after the closed fist to really put over how dangerous a closed fist is and also to, to put over that it was, it was like a shoot punch type of scenario. But he 
in a rage. He is obviously very, very unhappy. He says that, you know, as far as he wants to bring blood into this, he wants to break the rules. I just got a question for him. Rob Reynolds, you want this match so bad, you want to fight me so bad, you want to, you know, as far as avenge that KO loss, you want to try to rebuild your image off of me. Why don't you be my Valentine? And, uh, and then lays down the bloody St. Valentine's Day Massacre matchup. First man to bleed loses. And, uh, it's a fun, I, I think it's a fun angle to kind of book for this, because obviously, again, we don't do, like, well, we do, we have done stories, which is kind of funny, because obviously this promotion is, is a work shoot, battle arts, UWFI type of place, but we have been telling stories, because again, I, I think there are stories to be told even in a competitive environment, uh, as far as, or rather, it's um, a state rivalry thing, or a country rivalry thing, or uh, just even, you know, as far as something like a um, Habib Nurmagomedov, Conor McGregor type of scenario, where you have, you know, a stoic grounder, a ground and pound, really a grinder, and a guy that's gonna put you in the deep waters, like a Habib, and then, obviously, Conor, you know, loud mouth, probably drunk, maybe on cocaine, <laughs> type of talent, and it's just kind of the two worlds colliding there. And also, too, when there's just guys that have bad blood, rather it's from a, you know, a camp thing, or a, just a personal thing, a lot of different things to do, and plus, I mean, it's, um, uh, fuck, man, I mean, it's real, so it's hard to really fault them, obviously, and as far as, uh, from that perspective, to try and build some ticket sales, that's all it's about at the end of the day, but, uh, yeah, I think the the opening contest, okay, no more Masa, Marcus Mayhan, which it will be another time limit draw, boy, we really are just blue balling. <laughs> The fuck out of the people here in the Piper Casino. As now both guys will be 2-4-2. Two, and two. Incredibly tough. Uh, Marcus Mayhan is the agent. And uh, Kato Marmas is the agent too. So I'm glad we'll, we'll have Nigel be in there. As uh, then he's taking on Ray Cavalera. So we'll just have him be next. We'll keep Marcus Mayhan as the agent there. And Nigel Sevenson is going to get the win over Ray Cavalero. And uh, I also want to talk about, as far as uh, Nigel Sevenson, of getting the win over Cavalero. First time meeting, obviously. For the, um, the remainder of the series, I feel like this is a good idea to do. Much like you see when it's a card uh, promoted in boxing or uh, the UFC in, in mixed martial arts. Because, yeah, Pride didn't really... They didn't have, like, shows named after, like, main event talent versus main event talent, you know. But... With the numbered cards in the UFC, if, if it's a fight that's happened before, you know, as far as wherever it's at, if it's the second fight, the third fight, or even the fourth fight, you know, as far as they highlight that. And I think this is a good idea to do that, to really um, not only just kind of separate what's a first-time meeting, what's, you know, in, you know, the series, or as far as the second matches, you know, is it the rematch, is it the trilogy fight, is it the fourth fight, yeah, I think it just kind of makes things, uh, I wouldn't say easier, but it kind of fleshes it out more, as far as it, it gives it a little bit more of a, um, making it to where it still feels like it's a legitimate sport again, in a, in a nice presentation too, and then plus it's just, it's kind of like, um, going back, and, and if you want to see the Kato Momasa, Marcus Mayan matches, you can go in order just by looking at, you know, one, two, three, four, just to, it, it just makes things easier all the way around, I think. Uh, the, yeah, the, and, I, again, I, honestly, and Blackwell Bush and, and Michelle, and, yeah, oh, it's, um, Sugar Mano, it's not Michelle Bernard, I was thinking it was Michelle Bernard, but, yeah, we went with, uh, Sugar Mano here, and he's gonna get the win over Blackwell Bush, so that's gonna be, uh, six, or uh, about six, four and four, which, um, Blackwell Bush will be three and three, but that's, I mean, eight fights for Sugar Mano, kind of crazy. Uh, he's fought on half these cards, 
And then for uh, Kerry Fry and Rob Edwards, our main event, which we will see Rob Edwards get this win over Kerry Fry. As, um, so for the big thing for tonight is, oh my god, put this way out of whack. There we go. There. Jesus. There we go. Um, actually, I don't know, though. I think that's going to be a better match, actually, Nigel Sevens and Ray Cavallero. So, uh, yeah, being the both three and three, yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I think we're going to stick with that, actually. So, with the Night of Sin 17 show, we're going to see the winner of this, which is Rob Edwards, of course, over Kerry Fry, versus the winner of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre matchup, which is Rob Reynolds. Uh, we're going to have Rob bust him open uh, as far as he... I want him... He is a kickboxer, and I was thinking of doing something to where he maybe sets up a trash can, like, in the, uh, in the buckle corner side, kicks it type of thing as far as, um, like, maybe the lid itself, not the actual can, but the lid. Maybe even, uh, like a Van uh, Daminator type situation where he uses a chair, throws it at him, tag catches it, and then he kicks him. I kind of like that finish as an idea. I think it's, you know, it's obviously a very visual thing, and you know, it comes up and, you know, bloodied, and it, it protects Walter Tag, where he's just like, man, he just, you know, he just caught the chair. He, you know, Robert Reynolds was trying to kill him with it, and he caught it, but ends up getting, um, you know, even caught with it with a kick to, into the chair into his face and, and busted him open also playing into the fact that he got busted open during the, the close fist match or the close fist encounter so maybe that cut was a, you know, not fully healed and all that oh my god oh my god I cannot believe that I th I remembered I wanted to suspend Rob Reynolds but I didn't know it would be throughout this day god damn it so we can't do that match <laughs> i still I, I we could still work with this so we could still work with this we could have still that uh warning maybe wishing that he was spending instead of yeah we'll do that so instead of issuing the challenge for the saint valentine's day massacre match he instead wishes that he could be spending his Valentine's Day getting his revenge on Rob Reynolds. And that he is counting down the days he was pleading with, I, I, you know, as far as the, uh, the, you know, the people at the Piper Casino to bring him back. As far as Rob Reynolds to not suspend him for what he did. But he's just going to have to wait for it. And he can't wait to get his revenge, to get his hands back on Rob Reynolds. So, that changes the card a little bit with that. And that also changes the whole entire thing of having Rob Edwards also have his matchup with Rob Reynolds. It was going to be Rob versus Rob for the first time. So that is now thrown out the window as well. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. As uh, Tobias Bastio and Roberto Ayala, they're having their rematch uh, after we just saw the draw to kick off the new year at Night of Sin 14. They're gonna have an immediate rematch at the next show. Warren Turksberry's taking on Kyoshi Kawamura on uh, the next show. As both men only have one win so far, but obviously Warren Turksberry's only had three matches. Whereas uh, Cal Moore has now had five. Jules Knight, as far as for him, he, I believe, we have him facing Goro Hanamoto? Or might he, he might even be fighting Sugar Amano, actually. Let me, let's just go to Anderson 17. Yep, it is him and Sugar Amano. Let's, um, let's change this. Let's change this, because, yeah, 
even though we're giving Sugar Mono his fourth win, ah, nah. Nah, we're fine. We'll just, um... We'll have Jules Knight have a match, though, tonight. So, as far as Jules... So, yeah, there's Snyder and... and which I believe Snyder and Hatamoto are uh, booked for the next night. Which we'll go ahead and look at that. What an episode this is. As, uh, yeah, they are. So, yeah, we won't do that. We just gotta change some shit up on the fucking fly. Maybe we'll, yeah, well, it's, um, we could do Walter Tack of Jules Knight. That's not a terrible idea. As, uh, cause yeah, Jules beat him on, uh, Night of Sin 12. Hmm. Cause Walter, yeah, he's looking for his fifth win. Jules is work is looking for his fifth win, too. Yeah, I mean, it, it does fit for kind of what we're trying to do. But also, Michelle Bernard could really, really use a match. But I, I, I think this is it. I think this is kind of what we have to do. We're kind of pigeonholed with this. Guess we could have a draw. But nah, you know, as far as they've, uh, yeah, Walter Tag, I think we're going to give him his win back here. Um, have we picked our Steal the Show matchup yet? Was it the Carrie Fry and Rob Edwards? Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we'll keep that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, then, I guess we can have, as far as Walter Tag, and we'll put this as, so I guess, yeah, then we'll, uh, put in, instead of Rob Reynolds and Rob Edwards, it's now gonna be Walter Tag and Rob Edwards, which was... That will, um, t -t 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 about to say it, that happened on, uh, the final night, Night of Sin Lucky 13, which saw Tag beat him. We'll see how he does this time around. So good shit. Good, good shit. All right, we, <laughs> we figured it out. We gotta figure it out. That's actually also, too, kind of crazy. I believe Walter Tag, his last official loss, if we can look back at that record believe his last official loss was against Jules Knight. It was. So, yeah, this is... Oh, no, it, it was Terry Roundtree. So that was... Yeah, that was Terry. Scared Terry. That's what I, I, that's what I thought. Yeah. Which is, it is st still kind of weird that he got a title fight after the DQ loss, but... I like it, though. Like it. Makes sense. Good shit. And it leads to the Edwards tag matchup to we got it we got it we had to uh, rework some shit but we got it maybe we can have this just be a promo now in the ring afterwards but I just feel like it's gonna be terrible though maybe post show we can do that now as far as have it be uh, aired after the show eh Yeah, we can uh, maybe hype up now instead of the jewels. Instead of talking about the Rob Reynolds. We'll also be talking about hyping up his match and rematch with the Sandman on that one. All right. So we got we to gotta figure it out. And plus, it gives him time for, for a little promo. Three minutes. I think it's a good call there. Yeah, we're good to go. We got it situated. My God. As that was wild that there was also <laughs> Rob Reynolds off screen. I guess we didn't include. I guess it didn't save. So that's tough. That uh, yeah, Walter Tag was terrible though. Not a good promo. Not a good promo backstage. As we kick off the show though with Kato Moramasa and Marcus Mahan, which again the draw, one, one, and two. Incredibly tough. Incredibly tough. But, I mean, at least Kato did pretty well. And I got the show up to Strong Start, too. 42 for Blackwell Bush and Sugar Amano as uh, Sugar gets the win. Again, he probably would have won with a, with a palm strike knockout. I just feel like that's kind of for the best. And what a win, though. What a win, though, for Sugar Amano. And a 51 for Nigel Sevens and the Ray Cavalero. Nigel, of course, is tremendous. The shooter 
Nigel Stevenson getting his fourth win, making it now 4-3-2. and two. In a 55 for Walter Tag and Jules Knight getting his win back, beating Jules here. He's now 4-4-1, and one, and Walter Tag jumping up to 5-3. and three. Don't draw yet for the big man. And a 52 for our main event, so probably the wrong thing went on last, but Rob Edwards gets the win over Carey Fry, and he jumps up to 4-2-1 and one as well, whereas Carey Fry is now 4-4-1. and one. Yeah, I mean, this, um, this went better than, obviously, the previous couple of shows. I like that, uh, you know, 51 and, and 55, 52, couple of 50s. We increasingly got better throughout the night. Like it. Like it went pretty well. Again, we had to really salvage our major, major fuck up. But my god. I think we're going to have a better matchup, too. Because, I mean, the Rob Reynolds Big Bad Wolf match, we can now still call the first blood match. But we'll have to call something else. Obviously, instead of the uh, St. Valentine's Day Massacre match. It was a fun idea, though. It was a fun idea. Maybe we'll save that for another time. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as Nigel Simpson, again, has just been the fucking man. Put him over. And, uh... I'm trying to think. I mean, Kato Moore Moss actually did pretty well, too. So we're gonna... Say, tell him he's awesome, too. Good shit. Good shit. Alrighty. Uh, so, again, we're probably... Yeah. Thousand in the hole. We probably spent a lot on bonuses and perks. Yeah, because we basically flew in just about everybody. Pretty tough. Pretty, pretty tough. And we did increase our popularity, though, so at least it's a positive there. As on to Night of Sin 17. We go. Alrighty, so Night 17. Uh, we actually have already given the people that I want to not be on the show tonight the night off, so we can actually skip that as well. 122 people. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. And we'll just, again, skip the booking meeting. Locker room incidences. Oh, my God. As another wrestler's court. Kino Shikamura, just fucking absorbed by his phone. Unreal. As uh, he was found guilty, as far as for not paying attention during a locker room meeting. As, um, Marks May found him guilty and sentenced by a crate of beer for the locker room. Oh, wow. So John Snyder and Marcus May are, are travel buddies, the old vets. Kind of funny, as far as, you know, from two different sides of the world. Obviously, Australia and the U.S. for John Snyder, but still similar backgrounds in, in some ways. And Warren Turksbury's gotten some heat. Just great. Oh, and so has Michelle Bernard. Everyone's just a fucking dickhead. I don't think I can do anything with this yet, because, I mean, we can team bond and open form and all that shit, but... Yeah. I mean, open form's a good idea, but just not for today's show, I don't think. Yeah, we're fine. Yeah, I'm about to say, it, it, the call-out's a, a good idea for maybe Michelle Bernard, but... Again, just kind of the risk and reward factor. Don't know if it's there. Plus, I think for Michelle, as he's taking on Marcus May in tonight... So after, uh, for him, yeah, this is all the people, obviously. Most of them that have already been booked on the previous Night of Sin 16 show, but, um, having, uh, Mark's man kind of do the loop again, mainly because he's, uh, he's a solid, uh, road agent to have, but, uh, Michelle Bernard's gonna get the win there. Really no surprise, uh, you know, as far as Michelle now with a positive record, uh, Marcus Bay in now 2 5 and 2. Pretty tough to have a record like that. But, you know, as far as for um, our staff tonight, it's just going to be Cato and Marcus May in. Not too terrible, but. Just sucks, man. Nigel Sevenson's perfect for us, but he's obviously working in Japan more times than not. Uh, so, yeah, obviously the number one contendership matchup 
with Rob Edwards and Walter Tag. That's the, the main event for sure. We're probably going to start off with Warren Turksberry and Kenoshi Kawamura, though. And the War Machine does, in fact, get the win in five minutes, no less. And Kenoshi Kawamura is going to jump to one in five. Not great at all. A five-match losing streak. When will it end for the former MMA fighter? I think Goro Hatamoto and John Snyder can go uh, second on the card. Which, uh, John Snyder, going to get the win. He's going to be 3-4. and four. Gore Hanamoto jumping down, or, or dropping down, rather, to 2-4 and four after that. And it's the silencer getting the win in that affair. Which, uh, Gore Hanamoto, as far as, you know, he's kind of your traditional, again, wrestler. Whereas John Snyder at least has hand-to-hand -hand combat training with his time in the service. So you'd imagine... Uh, it'd be a, a pretty solid grappling affair. And then uh, Mark's band, you know, judo background. Michelle Bernard, he's kind of got that, um, the, the old snake pit type of uh, winging, um, maybe, you know, Billy Robinson, Carl Gotch kind of esque catch wrestling background. That's an interesting one. And then obviously Kyle Moore's got the MMA background, but Warren Turksbury, he's just kind of more of a technical wrestler in that one. And then for Roberto. Ayala and Tobias Sebastio, the scary scientist, will in fact get the win, and he jumps up to 4-3-1 and one with the positive record as Roberto Ayala again. Unhappy about that one, as yeah, I think we're going to put that match as the co-main, but our main event, we will see Rob Edwards beat Walter Tag, so that will mean Rob Edwards jumping up to five wins. He is the second man. Who jump up to five wins. Walter Tag, unfortunate. You can maybe imagine. Maybe he's got other things on his mind. And not the number one contendership. Is it right at the nine minute mark too? I just want to double check everything. It's a Sin City match. Yeah, I, I figured so. I figured we got that nailed down. So no uh, angles or anything to shoot. We can just, you know, straight into it. Uh, as far as uh, our booking analysis here, I, you know, because Roberto Ayala, he has that finish, I figured he has his idea of a finish would be, you know, him getting the win, so we probably won't use it here, but I gotta remember to use that. When's it end? Oh, God. Myers is a bit of a gamble. Yeah, it, it's gotta be him winning. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, Knight of Sin 7, or 18, rather. Yep, that's... Okay, so we won't be able to use it. That's fine. That's fine. So, yeah, Sugar Mano, Jerry... Uh, in the uh, Jerry. Jules Knight, uh, 2, as far as that matchup uh, took place last year. And, of course, the title fight between Rob Edwards and Terry Roundtree as well on the card. I'm sure the... We could do a March Massacre match. Call it that. With the first blood match. With, uh... Yeah, with Walter Tag and Rob Reynolds. I like it. Like it. We, we figured it out. <laughs> we figured it out. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Tobias Bastio and uh, Roberto Ayala 3, too. I mean, they've had the trilogy fight here. Ayala beat him on night 7. Night 14, they had the draw to kick off the year. So next month... You get the return match in the trilogy, and and uh, Tobias Bastio gets the win in that one. I like it. I, I think as far as comparing Night of Sin 17 and 16, I think 16 probably will be the better overall show, but I think that main event's going to be the best thing from these two tapings. Or from this taping, rather, I guess. you can Instead of two tapings, it doesn't make any sense. Because, yeah, um, Tag and Jules Knight was a 55, so... I think I got a chance to beat that. No problem. 21, though, for the opener. Warren Turksbury beating Kenoshi Kawamura with the STF. Tough, tough loss there for Kawamura. 126 people, though. Not too bad. Showing up to the Piper Casino. Another 27. Gore Hadamoto losing to John Snyder's Stretch Muffler. 517. Another quick one. Back to back submissions as well. 36 for John Snyder. Got the crowd hot. So that's, that's good. And the crowd white hot. 
in this one. That's some good wrestling, though. 36. Not bad at all. Michelle Bernard beating Marcus Mayhem with the cr uh, cross arm lock. Great win here for Michelle Bernard. Three submissions in a row. A uh, 48 as well, and I think it's getting up to the, you know the co-main of Maine now. With uh, ah damn, Tobias Bastio. He gets one with the triangle choke though. Ch chokes out uh, Roberto Ayala, which is a, a unique position because Roberto Ayala obviously going for that guillotine. How exactly we get him to where? Ayala gets caught in a triangle is probably either Tobias Bastio pulls guard out of a grapple. Maybe as far as Ayala jumps for a guillotine, Bastio, instead of um, dropping, you know, as far as like a, in a, you think of it like a DDT position with uh, Bastio's head, you know, hitting the mat. And, you know, then, you know, lock, and lock it in the guillotine. Counters it with a spine buster. Turns him around and, you know, drills him with the spine buster. It's an idea. It's an idea, but maybe... I guess maybe you can even... Yeah, it, it, it's tough. It's tough, tough, tough. Maybe counter with a Northern Light suplex, even? Or even just maybe shoving him up in, a, in the air and Roberto Ayala kind of lands on his feet and tries to get, uh, you know, into top guard. Hopefully, hopefully, it uh, would be a fun finish, though. But Tobias Bastio getting the win nonetheless. We could even have him do some crazy shit, like jumping off the middle rope and uh, catching him into a triangle, something like that. Be kind of wild, a flying triangle. But a 50 for our main event is Rob Edwards. He gets the win in nine minutes. As for uh, Walter Tag, he did outperform by a point. 50. So, yeah, I mean, the uh, Night of Sin 16 was the better show and had the better matches. Night of Sin's the manager is so fucking good. But, uh, yeah, I mean, for uh, the human weapon here, Rob Edwards, coming in for his second. Uh, I think now he's three, three in a row, I believe, on the year. He's been on a tear. Oh, wow, my Chubb and Marcus Mann probably should have stayed as the co-main. Yeah, we recently got better throughout the show. Increased the popularity in the region, too, hopefully. Uh, yeah, and then we'll just put over Tag and Edwards. Good shit there. Financial report. Yep, another, well, actually not too terrible. Ticket sales about cover the workers' costs, and we just paid, you know, basically the basic pay and all that. I think we're going to make money next month, I really do. And we're not going to gain any popularity, but we'll gain it next um, episode for sure in, uh, in March. Now, as far as for Rob Edwards in Scary Terry Roundtree... That's a big-time title fight. Big time. Uh, you know, as far as Rob Edwards now, the second guy to reach five wins, he uh, will now be on a three-fight win streak after losing to Walter Tag at uh, Nightus and Lucky 13. So he avenges that loss, too. Had the Terry Roundtree match in November, which he lost that as well. Uh, but that, you know, as far as we'll see how that's going to affect him in the future with, uh, as far as for the... This this run he's had, he's avenged two of his three losses in this winning streak, beating Jules Knight and beating Walter Tag. I think he's looking pretty good. I think he's looking to become the second BMF champion. And uh, as far as with him, with his finishes, of course, to remind everybody, uh, he's got the Muay Thai knee strikes and the roundhouse kick. Which, those Muay Thai knee strikes are going to be interesting. Because, obviously, for Scary Terry Roundtree, he's got the Scary Hour. Which is that, obviously, kind of that, um, the Uranagi or, the, you know, kind of the rock bottom. He's got the Arm Triangles, got the Mounted Palm Strikes. So, there's a lot of things. More so, it's more... They... There's a lot of ways they could kind of feed off each other. 
if Rob Edwards goes for a clinch, he can get caught into an arm triangle with a, the scary hour as far as countering it with uh, just catching him after uh, grappling up with him. Could he even do... Especially if it's on the ground, because I, I just don't think Rob Edwards, as far as ground-wise, does not have the finishers to really end it, because uh, most of these, you know, just the roundhouse kicks and the knee strikes, he's just looking to finish guys standing. So this could be a, an advantage for Scary Terry as far as grappling-wise, but he is a tough motherfucker in Scary, uh, Scary Terry, for sure. Brawler versus Striker, I think is a good way of putting it. Scary Terry, those guys, you know, six wins, has not lost yet. In uh, it will be officially a year of competition now that it's been February. So this is uh, a lot riding on the line for Scary Terry. But we'll find that out as far as who will win in that title fight in our next episode. Thank you all for watching here. As oh uh, my God, we've probably lost. It actually isn't too bad because we're probably gonna make about a, th a little. Eh. We still got about an extra 300 probably off of sponsors. Yeah. Sponsorship income. So that's going to be nice. Merchandise sales. We're almost in the $50 range. So that's nice. But yeah, as far as ticket sales, we're over 1000 now. We're looking good. It, it might not look like it on paper. But like you can really see from November and December, we were almost turning a profit. Once we get now back into the one show a month, we're going to be just fine. As uh, We will catch you guys next time, though. For Nidus in 18. Take care, everyone.